Hi there, today we're going to look at ferns. Now, you remember the other day I showed you the tree fern in the greenhouse at, uh, at the school? That is a leaf of the tree fern. And you can see from the other side of it, it's got all these brown things on it. Now that is the spore bodilis. What I call sporangi, and my daughter calls a sporange, because it rhymes with orange. And there, right, you can see, that's what I take. Now these are my son has sorted out, and these are heart's tongue ferns, and he's managed to get some of these. And you can see they've got the brown on as well. And this one is Blechnum chiliense. And you can't see the brown on that quite so much, but these are very specialist fronds. They don't look like normal fronds, and they're full of spores. Now, what you need to do to grow ferns from spores is get some compost, make it very wet, and put it in the microwave for about 90 seconds until it reaches boiling point. You have to cook compost because you've got to kill off all the bugs and all the fungus and all the bacteria, especially the algae that's already in the compost. And when it's sterilised, which is what the microwave does, you can put it in tiny pots like this. They don't need to be big. And these tiny pots then can be used. Right, I take my leaves and I've left them on a sheet of A4. And as you can see on this sheet of A4, you can see that is the spores. Right, it's just like dust. And so I can take my top off top of my pot off, here we go, take the top of my pot off and I can sprinkle some spores onto the surface. Doesn't need to be many, just a pinch, believe it or not, this is an awful lot of spores. There you go, so I've got loads to do some more. Put the top on, the compost is still moist from the microwave and it has cooled down so it's not hot this was done yesterday this now wants to go on a north facing windowsill a windowsill behind the curtain somewhere that's not too bright never gets a lot of full sun doesn't get too hot and it wants to sit there and it will sit there for a few months so keep an eye on it keep it watered a little few drops of water out the kettle not boiling but stuff that's been boiled already the reason why is because sometimes we end up with algae forming all over the surface like a green slime and uh, it looks quite ugly but you must keep it cool on a cool windowsill now the leaves are easy enough to pick the spores are very easy to collect as you can see i've got enough for a thousands there Eventually, after a few months, now I'm afraid camera girl, you're going to have to come in close on this, you will see this happening. Now, if you can see quite, quite tiny there, you'll see these green, sort of slimy-ish leaves growing across the surface. That is something called prethali, and that is how ferns grow. The prethali is produced by the spores and then you have male and female parts of the prothali. They get together and eventually you'll end up with a tiny little fern frond shoot out and then several more. And eventually you might end up from this tiny little pate pot, a hundred ferns, it's possible. So it's quite easy to do. It takes a bit of time, but it's really low maintenance time because you really don't have to do too much with it. And that will grow away nicely. You could even grow it in something like this. It doesn't have to be see-through. As a matter of fact, if it isn't see-through, it does even better. Ferns don't need an awful lot of light. Something like this, you would grow thousands of ferns in. And who needs thousands of ferns? Have a look around. You might have friends who've got tree ferns or something like that. Now, you can do just the same with them. And it's the same procedure, just one of these tiny leaf leaves like that would produce enough ferns to fill a garden. Spores are really tiny. Anyway, I think uh, that's what we've done today and looked at growing ferns from spores. 
Let me know how you get on. Give me some feedback. And I want everybody to have a try of these things. I'm trying to do them all so there's little expense. You don't have to leave. don't have to go into town to go and buy stuff. And um, you can do it all for almost free. Next week we're going to be growing stuff from the kitchen. So that's apple pips, pear pips, avocado seeds, nuts that are left over from Christmas, um, pineapple tops, herbs and spices. And if you're not allergic to peanuts, try peanuts. They grow relatively easy. Lemons, is that what my daughter says? Yeah, she likes lemons. So you can grow lemons. You can grow lemon trees quite easily. They're really nice to grow. And um, just surprise me. Think of something else you can grow. The only thing I've really failed with is coconuts. And they're never picked right. And Brazil nuts. They're cooked before they come in the country. Um, otherwise, a lot of things will surprise you. Anyway. Oh, one more thing. Um, don't leave some of the things out because you think they're too exotic. Some of the Indian vegetable shops have some really interesting stuff and it grows fantastic with really big leaf plants and everything. So don't don't leave them out if you'll go and buy one. OK, right. That's it for today. Um, I hope you have fun with growing ferns. Um, they are something that really isn't difficult if you do it the way I told you. The main important thing is never put them on a sunny windowsill, they overheat too quick and die. So these now will go into one of my least sunny windowsills out of the way for the next few months. Okay, so that's my grow Joe today. So I'll see you next week.